Hi, I'm Mahesh Thapa, and today I want to talk to you about tibial bowing in the pediatric population. There are three particular conditions I want to focus on, and I want to give you several examples of each condition so you have a better idea of how to make the diagnosis. Let's get started. So here we have a one-month-old girl that demonstrates posterior, apex posterior, and apex medial bowing. Uh, this is anterior, this is posterior, this is lateral, and this is medial. In addition to the bowing, we notice there's quite a bit of sclerosis involving predominantly the convex margin of the bowing. So you see it over here coming up like this involving pretty much the entire diaphysis. And over here you see it coming up like this, going up like that, and coming like that. Lots of sclerosis. That sclerosis is also present in the bowing that's present in the fibula, and that's often uh, the case where both bones are bowed. Now, People think this particular condition, uh, which is known as congenital bowing, is a result of uterine uh, packaging problems, you know, the positioning in the uterus of the fetus. Oftentimes, these kids, when they're born, are very dorsiflexed in their foot and ankle, such that the feet are going up like this and coming out like this, and sort of, you can, you can imagine that the concavity continues on and does something like this. This is what sort of results, and that's probably due to this abnormal intrauterine position. People have also postulized maybe this is due to localized skeletal dysplasia, or maybe um, intrauterine lack of blood flow to certain areas. But, but I think the best uh, diagnosis probably is this malpositioning uh, of the foot and uh, tibia and fibula. So let me show you what this child looks like at six months of age. There is still persistent bowing posteriorly and medially, but the amount of sclerosis is much less conspicuous, and the diaphysal broadening still persists. Uh, it's not as bad as it was before, but the broadening still is present. Now, let's take a look at the same child at one year of age. Again, there is progressive uh, decrease in the amount of sclerosis along the conca concave margin. Uh, there's still diaphysal broadening, both uh, present on the lateral view uh, and in the frontal projection. If we take a look at this child from one month to six month to one year, we can see that there's a gradual progression uh, of this uh, a decrease in sclerosis and slight decrease in the amount of bowing that's present. Let me show you one other case. Here is a 12-day-old boy. Again, we notice quite a bit of bowing medially and posteriorly. So posterior medial bowing with diaphyseal broadening and lots of cortical thickening along the concave margin. Let's take a look at the child at two years of age. Again, the broadening is present. The medial and posterior angulation is present, but it's less conspicuous. And finally, the same child at seven years of age, we can barely notice some of the bowing here medially on the frontal projection, a little bit more conspicuity, I guess, of the bowing posteriorly. So posteromedial medial bowing persists but it is less conspicuous. Now, is this a benign condition? Yes, in the sense that it's not associated with any genetic problems or tumors, but you know it can have quite a bit of morbid morbidity and, uh, and cause problems because this child, if we look at standing views, we notice that, in fact, there's quite a bit of leg length discrepancy. And the amount of leg length discrepancy that can happen in these kids often is a result of how much initial bowing there is uh, and how much uh, treatment such as uh, buttressing or, uh, or support that they're, that they're given. So this is a benign condition, but, it's, but it can have some morbidity as you see over here. So this is congenital bowing and it always occurs uh, medially and posteriorly. So here's another condition. Uh, we have bowing, in fact, on apex lateral and apex anterior. Both the tibia and fibula are bowed. This is bowing associated with neurofibromatosis type 1. Here we have a four-month-old boy. And these areas where the bone is bowing often leads to fractures and pseudoarthrosis. Let me show you what I'm talking about. This is the same child at one year and four months. They have developed a fracture in the distal aspect of the fibula. The tibia itself hasn't quite fractured yet. Let's take a closer look at this area. I'm going to zoom up there. And this is the typical pattern of what this fracture looks like. There is a quite a bit 
of pointiness, if you will, uh, of the fracture margins, both of the proximal fracture margin and the distal fracture margin. People have said this is penciling. Uh, I sort of think of it as a sucked on candy. If a child took a candy cane and sucked on it for, for a while, this is what that, uh, what that tip would look like. And you notice there's not a lot of healing here because there is a problem uh, in the mesoderm. This is a mesodermal dysplasia, neurofibromatosa type 1, uh, and they don't heal in the normal fashion. And also notice that, uh, let me just go back to the original image. Notice that there's no diaphyseal broadening like we had in the, the first set of images. In fact, there's narrowing of the diaphysis here at the area of, of maximal bowing, isn't there? Uh, and often it's this narrowing uh, that will lead to fracture because there's not as much support here. So here's that uh, same child at six years and seven months. Notice the fracture has not healed uh, and there are some cystic and sclerotic changes. If we go a little bit uh, more zoomed up view, again, really not a lot of, uh, of healing. And again, we notice that very pointed appearance to our uh, fracture margins. Here's another child, five-year-old girl with lateral and slight anterior bowing. This is another case of neurofibromatosis. And this illustrates one of the findings that you can see. Literature says that distal to the area of fracture or the area of bowing, you can see osteopenia that's not present more proximally. And you can see that here quite well, I think. If you look at the amount of mineralization here distally versus the amount of mineralization here proximally, I think you can agree that there's less mineralization distally. So that's one finding. Uh, another finding is what we see in the foot. Oftentimes there are associated uh, forefoot inversion and cavus and other uh, alignment issues that happen with neurofibromatosis that presents as tibia and fibula problems that's often propagated to abnormalities that we see uh, in the foot and ankle itself. Here is another five-year-old girl. Now, People have said that majority of the pseudoarthrosis or the bowing happens at the distal third of the tibia, but here's an example where it's happening more in the proximal third. So take that rule with a grain of salt. Uh, there's quite a bit of, of callus formation, yet the fracture is not really healing because, again, there is a problem with the mesoderm here. It's a mesodermal dysplasia, so uh, we don't have uh, normal healing. And there's again that sort of pencil point appearance to the distal aspect uh, of that proximal fracture fragment. We see the fracture is also present in the fibula. Again, these very pointed appearance. Let's take a little closer look at that tibia fracture. We notice that there are areas of lucency, some cystic changes, and there are other areas where it's more sclerotic. That's also a very typical finding of neurofibromatosis where there's fracture and pseudoarticulation. Um, and pathologically, these areas of cystic changes and sclerosis uh, have been shown to be hamartomatous fibrous tissue. Let's switch gear finally to the final bowing condition. This is a bowing that happens apex anterior and medial. And you notice that the fibula is shorter than it should be. So this is a fibular deficiency, also known as fibular hemimelia, if the fibula is completely absent. This condition is associated with coalition problems um, in, the, in the tarsals and also problems in the femur. So let's take a look at an eight-month-old male. Again, this one is hemimelia in the sense that the fibula is completely absent. Again, notice that the bowing is anterior and slightly medial. Here is that same child at one year of age, and we notice that there is indeed no fibula, but the femur is also short. And if you look at the forefoot uh, and hind foot, that's also not quite normal, is it? Finally, the other two known associations is a ball and socket deformity at the ankle. So here it is. Here is the socket, and here is the ball. So that's known as the ball and socket deformity. And again, here is the socket, and here is the ball. And what else do we notice? Let's take a quick zoomed up view. We notice that there is coalition. So tarsal coalition is a very common, oftentimes 50% of these kids have tarsal coalition, very common condition that's associated with fibular hemimelia or fibular deficiencies.
So there you have it. Those are the three main conditions that we typically find with tibial bowing in the pediatric population. Realize that if it's bowed posteriorly, it's more likely to be benign in the sense that it's probably congenital. Uh, it has to get followed up but it's not something that needs genetic testing or anything like that for. The other condition where you have anterolateral bowing is going to be neurofibromatosis type 1. And if you have anteromedial bowing, then it's going to be some sort of fibular deficiency or fibular hemimelia. If you like what you saw here, please give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see more pediatric radiology related content, please be sure to subscribe to my channel and ring the notification bell. Okay, we'll talk to you next time.